Everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. I'll be playing through day one of the Qualifier Weekend. Format's Alchemy. I'll be playing the Dinopod deck that I've played in the play-in. If you watched the previous video, haven't made any changes. Holy cow, I'm up against Golos. I didn't know Golos was a person. I thought it was just a card. Are they playing Esper, or are they playing Grixis? Probably Grixis. With Trolls of Khazad Dune. Ooh! Actually, Sultai. This is probably going to be some sort of like Return of the Witch King deck, would be my guess. Sensing they have a track some mana. Oh, it's some sort of domain deck. Okay. Uh I'm going to start out by potting this ruby away. I can hit either a Scale Speaker Shepherd or I could hit a. Uh, what's the 3 3 that gets rid of enchantments called? I, know the, I don't remember the name of it, but it would be good to hit. I did not hit it. Tranquil Frillback, that's the name of it. I could have hit it both off of the pod and it's actually in the spell book of this thing. Where are you at, Tranquil Frillback? They actually have a Traxa in their deck and they cast it. It's going to get pretty ugly for me, I think. What am I, what's my plan here? So I could pod this into a Wingbane Vantasaur, get naturalized, naturalize this, pod the Vantasaur into a Polani's Hatcher. That seems pretty good. The other option is just cast a Tali, but I don't even get to attack with the Atali this turn. They obviously are going to have some sort of sweepers in their deck, so I don't want to like go crazy into playing into the sweepers. And this, like, I'm going to have a lot of creatures in play, but I have not committed any additional cards to the board throughout all of this. I've just been getting my spawning pods going and I get to hit them for seven and I'm representing lethal next turn. I don't think I'm representing lethal through a uh, hard cast attract, so But I am forcing them to do something pretty good. That certainly counts as something pretty good. It 
So what happens if I just cast Burning Sun's Avatar? They go to six. I'm attacking them with 17 power. So they're, they're functionally 13. I think they're forced to trade the Atraxa for the Burning Sun's Avatar. And they live, but not by very much. I'm going to be at two after all this, I think. And I get the attracts off the board, and I still have a pretty solid board. And they didn't really hit that hard on the attracts. I would have thought they'd be digging for Sunfall. Maybe they don't have it in their deck. Or they just got screwed by the auto-tapper. So this is a good Tranquil Frillback matchup. And I think I also want Ren and Realm Breaker. And I'll probably just trim some rubies because... I, I assume they have sweepers even, even if they didn't play any. So strong hand. I was planning on playing the commercial district this turn, but now that I drew the delighted halfling, I think I just want to dump more stuff into play. Yes, I'm just going to blow up the up the beanstalk this turn. Hit them for three. Hope not to get hit by a sweeper. I don't. Not knowing what sweeper they have in their deck, it's a little bit hard to know what to play around, but I'm kind of not expecting them to have a sweeper this turn. Now, now they're going to be set up, they could have almost anything. And if it's a Traxa, I don't know that I'm going to beat a Traxa this time. I don't think that trying to get a bunch of savage stomps as my answer to a Trax is very good. Yeah. This actually might be an answer to a Traxa. 
in the sense that, like, if they play a Traxa, I can just play this and hope that I hit something out of their deck that answers a Traxa, which is obviously not, like, a high percentage plan, but it, it might be my best possibility. I'm kind of hoping that they actually collect the evidence here and shuffle just because I don't want to draw the Atali now that they had deadly cover up. What are they getting rid of my Vantasaurs? Yeah. That's a little bit awkward for me because it means that I can no longer pot into really expensive things. Which is sad for me. Like I can't even pot the Scale Speaker Shepherd away. That I can pot away. That thing really wasn't doing all that much for me. That's all right. So I want to, if I want to really try to high roll, I was going to say I could could have potted this into a trumpet and carnosaur and hope the carnosaur hit a Polani's hatcher. Obviously, with doorkeeper thrall in play. That's kind of off the table. It's Carnosaur on Carnosaur battle. this lives, I'll be able to get a bunch of value off of it by replaying things from my graveyard. If it dies, I'm pretty doomed. Also, why did the Doorkeeper Thrall not attack the Invasion of Zendikar last turn? Or did it? Does it start with four? I don't know how much it starts with. I think that they obviously knew that was about to happen. Maybe I should have actually just gotten the frill back from my graveyard oh, oh that no I can't get the frill back it doesn't work I guess I just want you The fruit rack doesn't work because of the doorkeeper thrall. The doorkeeper thrall is pretty annoying. Although they do, it shuts down their Atraxa, which I guess just the 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink would be enough to shut me down at this point. Now my Carnosaurs are gone too. My deck is extremely weakened. Oh, actually my Frillbacks are gone. My deck does not have a lot of gas left in it.
I plus this because I want to force them to attack it. No, I don't think I can possibly win now. Maybe I can still win if... Uh... Oh, no, the Scalp Speaker Shepherd's not going to get anything because of the Doorkeeper's roll. All in all, very awkward. So Deadly Cover-Up is their sleeper, and they have all these Doorkeeper Thralls. I don't think I can really afford to have answers to Doorkeeper Thrall in my deck. I guess I can Trumpet Incarnasaur. Maybe I'm, that was a line I missed that last game. I think I cast a Trumpet Incarnasaur at one point, and I could have killed the Doorkeeper Thrall. I don't know that that would have been better. The good news is I get to be on the play this game. Bad news is the sand isn't ridiculous. It's just fine. I considered getting a Savage Stomp there, but if they had Doorkeeper Thrall, they would have played it. So they just don't even have it in their hand right now. I think it's probably better to get something that... This is almost definitely going to be useful at some point, because I'm assuming they have four Up the Beanstalks and four uh, Leyline Bindings in their deck. Probably a Porcine Portent in their hand right now. So I think I'm just going to attack first. If they weren't tapped out there, I would have... Uh, or if they were tapped out, I would have potted that into a Polanyi's Hatcher. And tried to just get to attack them. I think this turn I'm actually going to go for the higher upside play. Come on. It's like two-thirds chance I hit a Scale Speaker Shepherd, which is definitely what I want to hit here. Probably going to need to draw some more lands at some point. Lightning Helix. Wow. It's good to draw a land that turn. Obviously an untapped land, so I could have frill backed right away would have been nice. Although, I still wouldn't have gotten to use the pod, so it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. I haven't seen any cards like go for the throat. Just makes me feel like I think I just want to play 
Charging Monster Soar. And Savage Stomp. Pig. They are getting priority, but it might just be because they can. I think they can pig their own enchantments, which obviously they don't want to do. They have access to blue mana through their demolition field, but it would have to take a turn off of doing stuff probably to get it. So they may not have a Traxa in their hand or they don't feel like they have time to set up for it, which they already had still a super high life total. So they definitely have time. So if I loam speaker, they're gonna just demolition field. The end of my charging monster soar. They get to see my hand, right? Okay. No more surprises. Savage Stomp. I'll be able to, if they actually do have a Traxa and they cast it, I will be able to kill it. I mean, it's going to cost me a ton and they're going to have all the Atraxa cards, but it isn't 100% game over. If that's what they're doing. Because I'll be able to pod the Vanthasaur into a Hatcher, pod the Hatcher into a Trumpeting Carnosaur, Savage Stomp the Atraxa, and I'll have like the eggs and whatever I hit off the Carnosaur, and I'll have two pods to try to beat all the Atraxa cards if that's what happens. Alright, that hasn't been what happened. Even if they have Leyline Binding here, I can naturalize it with the trigger on the stack, so this would still go through. Do I want to pod pre-combat for a Hatcher? Let's think about this. So if I just attack, I can attack for 9, they go to 7. And then I'll have a Hatcher post-combat. Or they can be at 9 and I have an extra egg. I think this is a spot where I just want the guaranteed damage. I'm going to pod into a hatcher post combat though. I 
I wanted the guaranteed damage because I think there's a reasonable chance that they have a sweeper. Or, it, maybe not a reasonable chance that they have a sweeper, but I think that one of the ways I can lose is that they play a sweeper there. Yeah, okay. They do get all the hatchers out of my deck now, which maybe that was bad. Don't let them do that. But I think that that was always going to happen. Oh wait, they're getting the Vantasaurus out of my deck. Maybe that's better for them? I don't know. Let's see if I can hit a paleontologist. I did. So if they can't get the paleontologist off the board, it's going to be a big problem for them. If they can get it off the board, it's not that big of a problem for them. Guess I'll get rid of their graveyard. I could get rid of my own graveyard just in case the virtue of persistence somehow stays in play, but I've got two answers to it in my hand. And I do have paleontologists in my deck, so like getting rid of my own graveyard does make some of my cards worse. All right, they're just dead. It was a close game. This hand does not have enough mana in it. These two Atalis are looking not too castable. Sounds much better. I think I'm going to ditch the ridge line because it's a tap land. Which could be awkward. Like, I don't know what I'm going to get off the Scale Speaker Shepherd, but probably not going to be in the market for attacking with a creature land anytime soon. Definitely, it, now that I know the matchup, I definitely did not need to have a ridge line. Ooh, opponent kept a greedy one. So next turn I can pod the Shepherd into a Vantasaur and then have the Raptor fight. And I get a card. It's not the best play though. They have uh, whatever it's called, one in a white flash, you get two soldiers. That's what they're going to play. Doing that whole play means I don't get to play Ruby or the Commercial District this turn, but I think that's fine. Let's try to do this in a way that I don't have to take pain from the forest. The Car Pollution Forest, that is. This isn't something you see every day, somebody drawing a card off of Ripjaw Raptor. Obviously, double, double Ruby Daring Tracker is not the greatest thing in the world to have in your hand. I do have the pod, so I could pod them away, and I would get Scale Speaker Shepherd three quarters of the time. Turns out. I'm not going to get anything. 
All right. This is the matchup for the spear, the stalwart spear tails. I, think I also want barrage and shove aside. Tranquil throwbacks, unless they have the war leader, this anthem, whatever it's called, doesn't really do all that much. And I usually cut ruby in matchups where I'm boarding in more cheap interaction. I could conceivably trim one Atali too. I think I'm going to do that and play the Witch Stalker Frenzy. Not the best time in the world. Double pain land, but I do have one mana play into two mana play. So I'm going to keep. I'm, I'm going to let this thing hit me and see if I get a better target point shove aside that but I will cast shove aside if they don't do anything yeah. they probably have make two one ones into try to convoke out the knight errant of eos so I guess I want to keep their creatures in play under control please no more car pollution forests Resolute Reinforcements, that's the name of the card. Need to do another one into Convoke. This is starting to get ugly. Knight Errant of Eos is the name of the Convoke card. Come on, whiff. Seems improbable they would whiff. I guess it matters some that I killed the Novice Inspector, though, just because means they couldn't convoke for f the full five, so they couldn't hit other Knight Errant of Eoses. I don't know if that's going to be the difference, but maybe it'll matter. Probably not going to be able to beat... Well, I'm certainly not going to be able to beat that. Ibidane's Recruiter this would also have been really bad. This is a game where I get to be on the play. I guess they have the, the case of the whatever it's called. I think I'd still rather just have Witch Stalker Frenzy, though. This isn't a great hand, but I, I think it's good enough to keep. Recruiting going over, going on over there. I think I'm willing to trade my scale speaker shepherd with the recruitment officer given the opportunity.
yes, that was worth it. Not sure. I'm regretting my choice now. Bottom. No, top. Top's no good. That was a really good draw. Hard to know what to attack with. Probably not the Wingband Vantasaur. They have Imidane's Recruiter. I just have three blockers left, so I think I can afford to do this. This will put them into jumping territory for next turn. Or blocking territory, I guess, is the more correct way to say it. Okay, they do have this card in their deck. The Warden of the Sky is about to become a problem. So we attack with both of these. I have to jump one. Attack with all the dinosaurs. They have to block two things. So they probably would eat here. And I would kill two of their creatures. I think the best attack is four things. Hold the Scale Speaker Shepherd back. The Scale Speaker Shepherd would just get eaten by the novice. Inspector, and if I sent both of these, the Paleontologist and the Scale Speaker Shepherd, I think would both die. This way, I'm going to get to rehatch. Gonna make it hard for them to live next turn. It's just two activations off of being able to Vigilance attack, right? No, it's only one.
man, they went top again. That's no good. This is going to be everybody's coming in. We coming in hot. If four blockers, I have seven attackers, so I think they're actually just dead. They'd obviously want to switch this around. I think the Warden of the Sky should probably be blocking something that it can kill. And the Winged Bane Vantasaur can be chumped. But it doesn't matter because they're dead. first. I like this hand. What's up with the one mana one two? I guess this is going to be like some sort of white green convoke deck, probably. Knight Errant of Eos, and there's a, an Amara. It's a good creature, too. And there she is. Question is, do I want to Savage Stomp the Amara? Probably I do. Which I'm going to have to take point of damage to do that. Could just Savage Stomp the Lookout instead. Lookout's... The strength of not Savage Stomping the Amara is just they could have multiple Amaras in their hand. I think this might be better. Also, this means that like I won't be getting pecked for one if I decide I, I want to start attacking with Wingman Vantasaur. Which I don't know if that's really the most important thing in the world. Oh no, I'm being invaded by Gobokan? Or maybe I am Gobokan in this story? I always get confused. I am not impressed by your invasion of Gobokan. I assume they're about to take my spawning pod, but that'll be fine. Oh, they fear the scale speaker shepherd. I guess that's reasonable, especially if they have a haywire mite. Oh, that was a nice draw. I, I potted before combat there because I wanted 
the egg to hatch faster. I don't know if that was worth it. That was my thought process at least though. Two bunnies. And they also still have whatever the Convoke card they got off of this was. Or no, it, it could have been the Night Errant of Eos. Go away. Was it? It was the Night Errant of Eos. Not going to attack. Just going to pod. It does cost me something to wait till after combat to pod, like just to hatch the egg. It means that if I hit another hatcher or if I hit a wingbane vantasaur and get a savage stomp, I don't get to play them. I think their deck probably isn't capable of beating my deck once the game gets to this point. Maybe I'm wrong, though. We'll see. I probably would prefer that I didn't draw 7 million pods. I guess the Haywire might gives me protection from the invasion of Gobacon flipping. So I don't need to worry so much that they've got these random one power flyers hanging out. Ooh, another Night Errand of Eos. Hitting another one. It's a big bunny. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This so not enough to flip that. I think they're dead. I guess they're not dead, but they're forced to block with the bonicorn. Got a one.
This is different from the white red matchup. So the deck gets beefier. I think I definitely want this stuff. I think I want both Atali's though. Let's try it like that. Decent hand. Any hand where you can play a turn one delighted halfling into a three drop is going to be pretty good. I think I'm going to kill that while I can. It's painful to not spend three mana on this when I can, but the Bunicorn, like, my hand is not fast enough to overpower one of those quickly. It also means I don't get to shove aside the might, so my pod's going to be like probably a one-shot deal, which isn't great. Holy cow, I'm being overrun by mites. How's one person supposed to beat something so large as that? I had a really strong hand. <laughs> Thought I might be able to pot up to the point where I could block the ancient Imperiosaurus and not die, but I don't think I'm beating all this extra stuff they just got. Hands like this all day. I guess they don't have delighted halfling in their deck. Kind of makes sense to not for them to not have delighted halfling. Just because they don't, all their expensive cards have Convoke. I don't know, I'd be tempted to play it over like some of the one mana flying creatures that they've got in their deck that seem like not the best. I'm going to have to Savage Stomp this thing.
Don't need you. Come on, some sort of business card on top of my deck. Trumpeting Carnosaur. Spawning Pod. Okay. Worst things could have happened to me. I don't hate trading Ruby with Amara if they're willing to double block. Means they can't attack me and get the uh, case of the Gateway Express flipped. I'm actually going to have a pretty good attack on the ground next turn because I can loam speaker one of my lands. And also afford to animate Restless Ridgeline. Hopefully they don't have a Regal Bunnicorn in their hand. If they have that, I'm going to be sad. and probably dead. Ooh! That's all they're doing. I think I'm in pretty good shape. Oh, Sweeping Lookout added to the board. makes it easier for them to chump, but it also means that they can't attack me as freely to flip the case, which I, I continue to not want to just let them fr flip the case for free. They don't have to block. They could go to one. That doesn't seem like a good way for them to try to win, though. I would assume they have to chump the Vantasaur. cards in their hand, I believe. I don't think none of this stuff is an Amara card. Why didn't they do anything on their turn? They have March of the Multitudes in their hand. They're going to march for four. They might have double March of the Multitudes in their hand, actually. Come on, Polani's Hatcher. Eh, it's not the worst. It's not the best either, though. March of the Multitudes is one of the cards off of this thing. I skip by it, but that's got to be why they they played their turn the way they did. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
Question is, do they have an, if they have another march, it might start getting pretty rough. It'll be a dead giveaway if they, again, don't do anything with their turn. Haywire might. Whatever this card is, it's their last uh, Amara card. Seems like it's Conclave Tribunal with the way they keep hovering over my cards. No, it was an Ancient Imperious or... 16 power creature. Eight life. So if this blocks here, that blocks there. Block, block. I'm in trouble. So if they attack with just the Ancient Imperiosaurus, it's pretty bad for them. Because I'm just going to trade some dinosaurs and then I'll get to recycle the dinosaurs. I think they're just not, they shouldn't attack me at all this turn. It's pretty bad for me that they drew a very good card off the top of their deck. Maybe they're going to attack me. Come on, attack me. No, they didn't attack me. I could chump attack them just to get to recast the Carnosaur, but that doesn't seem very good to me because it taps all of my mana. And I can't, it, you can only Paleontologist each creature once. That's my best draw. This might be a game where I need to, like, scale Speaker Shepard into Zakama. Spawning Pod would be an okay draw. They do have a Haywire Might, but I would get to convert my Carnosaur into a Natali, I think is what I would do. And then my Carnosaur would be in the graveyard for the Paleontologist.
I could Atali and hit an Amara out of their deck and hit Conclave Tribunal to get the Ancient Imperiosaurus off the board. Ancient Imperiosaur, I guess is the actual name. I think they've already used two Amaras, though, so the odds of that are pretty low. Back up, paleontologist. Why they didn't, instead of cracking the clues, they've just been making these mites that... I guess they are a Convoke deck, so they're sort of mana sources for them. If I was them, I maybe would have preferred to just cash in the clues of Bonacorn. Oh, it's only a 1919? Okay. That's manageable. on the play this game. Well, that's not good for me. That's not good at all. <laughs> this animation's gonna take a while.
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah. Seems like I'm gonna lose. Oh, they don't see each other? That was bad. They could have died anyway, but that was bad. It seems like there's no justice if my dinosaur deck is going to lose to Ancient Imperiosaur from a non-dinosaur deck. I'm going to call no justice on that one. The Haywire Mites are really out in force. I hope this is an Insidious Roots deck. It is. Insidious Roots decks are generally pretty easy for my deck to beat. They need to have a really strong draw. on the draw this game so I can afford to wait and see if I want to use kill the propagator primordium or exile a card from their graveyard with the paleontologist I guess I'm not going to let him hit me for three I'll just shove aside the primordium Getting pile on. Seems like it. Don't really want to let that card sit in play. That's like them having a good turn with that is pretty much their only way to win. What do they have seven of these propagator primordiums in their graveyard right now? Of oh, only five. Damn it. Now oh, I could actually lose. I have a second roots.
need to draw a Tranquil Frill back, or even just a second Vanasaur so I can naturalize the Insidious Roots. I can fizzle the Soul Cauldron and the Prop Propagator Primordium with the Paleontologist, but it still triggers the roots. So it's not really all that exciting. The play. Let's see if I can hit, if I hit a Vantasaur or a Tranquil Frillback, that would be very good. have a perforator crocodile in their deck. Nice. I like that guy. Need 20 or more cards in the graveyard. Oh, I think I'm doomed now. I think they have their full-on combo because they mailed the chitinous crawler. I'll let them do this for a second just so you can see in case you're you haven't played alchemy before but they actually they're basically infinite ooh they can cast their own perforator crocodile that's enough so this is a tranquil frillback matchup This is the key card in this matchup, making this a very strong hand, I would say. I might run out... Okay, I'm not going to run out a naked spawning pod now. Just to use my mana. Like, you, you don't want to just fire off Tranquil Furl back the first turn you can. Ideally, you catch an Insidious Roots and you know you clean out their graveyard. Is what the goal with that card is. Oh, that guy's gone. Gonna make a wingman Vantasaur. If 
If they have a haywire might, it'll be sad, but if they don't, this game's going to get ugly for them pretty quick. pile on, which would be bad for me if they do not. Okay. Maybe I should have gotten their graveyard that turn. And they bricked. I'm not sure I made very good decisions this game, but they didn't they don't seem to have had like the most explosive start in the world. So hopefully it's not gonna matter. What is this card? It's like Wrath. Okay. It's not a card I was expecting them to have, but it's fine. They get a land and something else, maybe? Oh, they only have a tapped land. Still worth getting. So I can get their graveyard, pod this into a Vantasaur. The Vantasaur fights the Chitinous Crawler. I get a big hasty attack. I don't think this virtue of hard casting virtue of persistence was going to save them, but I even have that covered now. How many Banthosaurs do I have left? I think there's only one left in my deck. That is correct.
They're at 11. No frillbacks yet. Just sad. I don't know. They surveil top, which I guess they want to fill their graveyard, so maybe that's not great for them, but. Give me the Tranquil Furlbacks, please. It's not ideal that they have that card in play. This is a bold decision attacking with the Haywire Might. I think I'm going to block. Even if they had attacked with the Rubble Belt Maverick and not had Insidious Roots in play, I still would have just blocked the Haywire Might. Slightly more than half the time I'm going to hit a Tranquil Frill back here. The other half the time I hit a Scale Speaker Shepherd, which is another way to get me a Tranquil Frill back. I won't be able to cast it and blow up Roots this turn, though, sadly. And they can get a Haywire Might onto one of their creatures, so this pod is not going to live for that long.
So I'm going to get the roots in their graveyard. Leaving them with a soul cauldron that they can feed off of my graveyard, but I do have the paleontologist, which can fight the uh, soul cauldron. It'll lead with the scale speaker shepherd because <coughs> I can also play the uh, Regisaur Alpha. I have enough mana to do both, which is nice. Does mean they're going to get the Soul Cauldron again. I think that's something I just have to live with, though. I'll have a hasty Atali next turn that I can follow up with another hasty Atali the next turn. Which seems pretty good. Come on, Insidious Roots from their deck. Shut down this Soul Cauldroning my deck nonsense. Lies. Even though obviously Savage Stomp would do something, I th think that Can this oh tokens tap for mana of any color. Nice. I think that them getting more artifacts and enchantments in play is the way that I lose. So I'm gonna play around that. Oh, they can they can haywire might the insidious roots because of the soul cauldron. I think I'm gonna naturalize the soul cauldron this turn. Is that good? Maybe that's not good. So how's that terror of the tides card work? Right, but this was this is just a card that's in their deck. Weird. 
I mean, this is a really good card. I could see them wanting to have this for the mirror, but it's kind of weird that they boarded it against me. I guess they're really afraid of pod. But as we saw this game, like, I got two one-shot pods, and that was enough. I don't know that this is a good enough card in their deck. I continue to be kind of scared of Terror of the Tides. I think that that's maybe the way I can lose still. I can take it's only minus one minus one, so that's not going to save them. Would that have hurt me? That would have been pretty bad for me. I guess it wouldn't have killed me, but it would have made my life total not very good. Well, that's certainly not enough. Reasonable hand. For a non-delighted halfling hand. Ooh, mono red. Or some sort of aggressive red. It's probably not mono. It's very important in matchups like this that it, the Lanor Loam Speaker having three toughness means that it doesn't die to a lot of their burn. I mean, it doesn't die to their one mana burn. They both die to lightning strikes, so. There is that. Oh, a drill land. Nice. Now we're rallying at the Hornburg. Please don't have. Melt through or shock. They had it. Untap land for the frill back would be pretty nice. That's fine too, I guess.
It's going to be Fugitive Codebreaker, I think. They do probably have Fiery Conscription in their deck, which is an enchantment, so the Frillback does have a target to blow up. It wasn't Fugitive Codebreaker. Interesting. Ooh, that's bad. They have any spell, I think I'm doomed. So now I'm out of Lightning Strike plus like Melt Through slash Shock range. It would be nice to get out of double Lightning Strike range. Or double Pyrotechnic, whatever that guy's called, range. That's going to require another Tranquil Frillback to achieve, though. This could also be a Fugitive Codebreaker, but... That's less scary of the options. I don't know. Oh, a monastery swift sphere. And the spin again. Gonna go for try to kill them in two turns. Could have stacked things better, so I guess there's no way I was ever gonna get to attack with the uh, Swiss Spear. They do have Fugitive Codebreaker in their deck. Why didn't they Codebreak on their turn? They would have had mana to be able to cast a spell. It's weird. I 
I have the perfect blocker for Feldoon. Obviously, I want Tranquil Frill back in this matchup. I think I want Stalwart Speartail. Shove aside. Even Haywire Might wouldn't be the worst. Um, don't need all these Atalis. I think I don't need all these Polanis Hatchers either. I also like trimming back on Scale Speaker Shepherds and Spawning Pod. The Haywire Might, I'm sure they have Fiery Conscription in their deck, even though they didn't draw it. Also, just cheap blocker and way to gain life. Like, I don't think that I need to have all that much top end. I just need to stay alive and just, like, you can win win the game with a single wing pain van Mantasaur. As long as you don't die. It's a very good hand. is probably going to die. Um, maybe if I hadn't drawn Ruby, it would have made sense just to leave up Shove Aside. But given that I did draw Ruby... I can have Shove Aside this turn and Ruby. I guess I'm shove, shoving aside in the Feldoon. I like Stalwart Speartail in this matchup because they almost like have to. Use two cards to kill. I guess this is going to be Pyrotechnic, whatever it's called, and it's really going to hurt. But now the Carnosaur is larger. If they don't have Fiery Conscription, the Haywire Might can hit Mishra's Foundries. That's kind of fun, I guess. And it, it can also hit the Roll Tokens, I think. Yep. It's a Rally at the Hornberg. I don't know what the Hornberg is, but they definitely like to Rally there. Can you shove aside your own creatures? You can. So if I really need three life at some point, I can shove aside my own Haywire Might.
This isn't the most helpful thing in the world. I think I was already going to win if I got to untap. I plan to just trade with Polani's Hatcher. I'm going to be potting the Haywire Mite. Assuming they are, or are they just dead? No, oh, they, they were definitely dead if I used the Paleontologist to animate the ridge line and Yeah, I could have killed them. I don't think they can kill me, so... It's not that bad, but I didn't need to give them another turn. I guess they could actually kill me if they have two lightning strikes. If they had had two lightning strikes, they would have killed me last turn. I guess if they had one lightning strike. Yeah, I could have played that game better. I haven't played against any repeat decks yet. I think Alchemy is actually a, a format in a great place right now. Probably want to save Shove Aside for Warden of the whatever the sky is called. Or Regal Bunnicorn, that's another good one to kill. Yeah, I'm just going to shove aside it this turn. I could have potentially, like, frill-backed the clue this turn. But there's a danger that they play two things and, like, I never get the opportunity to shove aside the Bunicorn again. And also, if they're playing, like, a white-blue artifact-based deck, they're probably going to have, like, Zoetic Glyphs in their deck. So there's going to be good targets for the frill-back throughout the game, probably. What I definitely should have done is hit them for four. I mean, I, I guess I left up Trumpet and Carnosaur, but I think I should have traded four for one there. Here's the Zoetic Glyphs that I was talking about. Maybe I'm happy I didn't trade four for one. Blow this up. Yeah, just blow this up and gain life. Backup bunny. I 
And if they have Reprieve in their hand, this game's going to be hard. I played this way because I'm specifically if that I'm scared about them having reprieve and also getting to kill a warden of the inward sky is pretty good. That card if it gets out of hand is is really bad for my deck. I might be able to keep the bunicorn under control. I don't think getting rid of their graveyard matters at all, so I'll just leave my Lenore Loam Speaker untapped. Well, this works out great. These, there's one frill back left in my deck and three scale speaker shepherds. Thinking about how I might pod next turn. I kind of like having the wingbane banasaur as a blocker. Both because they have this restless anchorage and probably they're going to use the case of the filched falcon at some point because they can they can flip it just by making a thing with mirax right now That's a big boy. Turns out they didn't have Reprieve in their hand. They might not have Reprieve in their main deck. I'm sure that they have Reprieve in their sideboard at a minimum. Six six flyer. <laughs> Impressive.
Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I should just do this instead. Tranquil Throwback is really the card that uh, wins a lot of matchups. Without that card, I don't think this would be a deck. I'm going to get a Polani's Hatcher into play this turn. Either I'm going to hit it off of Vitaly, I'm going to hit a pod off of Vitaly and double pod, or I'm going to pod this into a Hatcher. And they'll probably be dead. Obviously, I want the Frillbacks, I want the Haywire Mites, definitely want Lithomantic Barrage. I think I want Shove Aside as well. I think I'm going to trim one Scale Speaker Shepherd. Over, it's either the fourth Scale Speaker Shepherd or the third Shove Aside. And I think I'm going to go with the third Shove Aside, at least on the draw. I think this hand is good enough. It's marginal, but remember, I can channel this thing. I don't have that many expensive cards left in my deck. So I'm either going to be drawing lands or cheap cards. Then most of my hand will probably become live. Yeah, now things look great. I'm going to either Vantasaur or Tranquil Frill back next turn. I guess this could die and then I wouldn't be doing that, but I'm not expecting that out of their deck. Just gonna get naturalize. It's the safer play. And the way their deck works, I'm there's always gonna be targets for it. Oh Makes me feel a little bit bad. I didn't take Savage Stomp. Because so I do think I need to kill that Thopterist, which I will be doing with the Carnosaur at this point. They can reprieve Itali even if I play it off Delighted Halfling. Which, I think this format would be a lot better if Reprieve wasn't quite as good, but is what it is. I don't think I want to just fire off Naturalize on the Incubation token or the map. Like, if it gets to the point where the Incubator's about to hit me for damage, I'm definitely going to Naturalize it, but... As long as the Winged Vantasaur is holding it back, I think I'm not going to. I wouldn't mind casting Tranquil Frill back next turn and just taking that out. See? Get a better target. I wonder if 
if that was really worth them doing. Is there something they can do in response? Like, this is sorcery speed. Uh, okay. I guess that counts as something you can do. I got five damage out of it. Ten point life swing. It's not nothing. I think I can afford to start attacking them. That will be hitting me back for one, but... The deck does not have a lot of reach in it, I would imagine. It's a Thran portal. How is this different in Alchemy? It just comes into play untapped? I don't... Maybe this card should be in my deck. Basic land type. Oh, it's just it's a pain land that it's you always take you always lose life, I see. So that's not that good. It's not just like a better car pollution forest. I think this comes into play tapped in its original version, maybe? Oh no, they have Sunfall in their deck. This is a hope to top deck Sunfall situation, that's why they just blocked like that. They can die really fast. Well, if they do draw Sunfall, they'll have a 5-5 five, five token, which the Schooner will not be able to attack through. And that will be bad for me. So if I go, if I play a creature to attack, and I animate this, and they have nothing, how much damage is that? So this would deal 5... 8, 10, 25. I think if, even if I don't play a creature, I probably have lethal then. So 5, 9, 12, 22. Yeah. I think the only card that I'm really worried about is Sunfall, but I think if they play Sunfall now, I'll be able to... Oh, I guess I, I should have made this a 4-5 in case they top deck Sunfall. That was a mistake. Because I was thinking I could animate this and attack with this in the schooner, but I would need 
one more mana to play the Delighted Halfling to crew. So that was that was definitely a misstep. I still wouldn't have been able to play the Halfling, crew it, and then use both the map tokens on the schooner to potentially force them to jump. Battling against Crokies. This hand is too slow on the draw. Much better. No idea what he's playing. So I guess I'll bottom the frill back. Still no idea what he's playing. Ashnod is not a card that I see played very often. Sack a creature, you get a power stone. This is some sort of Abzan beatdown deck, it seems. Creature card from your graveyard only. And you get a zombie artifact creature. That's weird. Who wants a zombie artifact creature? That would have been a good turn to draw another mana creature. Still no interest in the Power Stone. Ooh. This is a very good card. None of those were very good hits, I'm going to have to say. Oh, so this is going to be a, I forget the name of it, Dedicated Dollmaker, I think is the name of the card. I am getting crushed this game. That was a good draw, at least. His hand is bad, I might still have a chance. Goodbye, Trumpet and Carnosaur. Hello, Juggernaut. I think he should have attacked there. The Knight Errant of Eos. I 
kind of want to attack with Polani's Hatcher, but I think it's just going to trade with the Ashnod, which really isn't that exciting. Oh. This is going to be rough. This is going to be a rough one to win. Because the three blind mice is about to go off. Do have a Juggernaut, though. That's going to be able to attack. Or forced to attack, depending on your point of view. Maybe. So I bottomed a Tranquil Frill back, and I don't think I've shuffled since then. That would be a really good draw. Pod would be an okay draw. I could pod the Scale Speaker Shepherd into a Naturalize and just get rid of the three blind mice and try to just block my way through this mountain of junk they have in play. That was not a very good draw. But I am the proud owner of a Juggernaut, so that's good. Six blockers, he has 12, 17 attackers. Yeah, math's not working out so well for me. Probably need to have Tranquil Frillbacks, at least some of them in my deck against three blind mice. Because he's going to have dedicated Dollmaker as well. I need to have shove aside in my deck. I didn't see any Warden of the Inward Skies, but they're probably in that deck. It seemed like his deck is like white, black, and maybe green only for Ramara. I'm kind of inclined to just not sideboard. I don't think the Stalwart Spear Tail to fight three blind mice is a very good idea. I think I'd rather have Tranquil Frill back. Maybe I want to. Maybe I'm just going to board in one more Tranquil Frill back. Ray, I'm on the play. I'm going to scry anything that isn't an untapped land. Well, I'm going to surveil anything that isn't an untapped land away. So I got two shots for an untapped land. Return two. And if I whiff, it's it's bad, but it's not at the end of the game. My deck has 24 lands in it. Five of them are tapped lands. I guess I also would keep uh, the 1 2 halfling. This is a good reason to not have mulliganed. The fact that I'm not surprised he has Phantasmal Extraction and I knew he has the Juggernaut Peddlers, which the Juggernaut Peddler like, doesn't completely take a card from you, but generally just having a Juggernaut in your hand as opposed to a card you actually put in your deck is not good. So you just want to have more spells to start to weather the discard. I would assume he's going to take pod. That was not what I wanted.
made have made a mistake in not playing a loam speaker because now we can just take a loam speaker and I don't have a mix of paleontologists and loam speakers. Could frill back the haywire might, but I think it's better to set up for the carnosaur for next turn. Assuming none of my stuff dies. Also, I do, I mean, I have this in my deck mostly because I want to hit three blind mice with it. And this turn coming up would be the first opportunity he would have had to play three blind mice. Oh, it's another giant Imperiosaur. Yuck. I'm sure his deck list has poor sign poor tenth in it, given the, the colors he's playing. That's why I'm sure of it. And I'm probably going to have to block this thing with a bunch of creatures next turn. And if he has poor sign poor tenth in his hand, I'm going to die. I guess the other option is I could just pod into an Atali and hope I hit poor sign poor tenth. And then pay the ward cost on the Imperiosaur. I could also hit an Amara and be able to pod into or an Amara and then hit Conclave Tribunal. I don't think I'd be able to cast that and pay the ward cost. So what happens if I play the Frillback, kill the Might, gain three life? Try to block the Imperiosaur with everything. Probably lose to like any spell. Any I would lose to any instant. Also, Conclave Tribunal makes that plan completely non-functional. I think I need to pod and hope. So I can double block the Imperiosaur now with the Wingbane Vanthasaur and the Atali. If he has nothing, that's great for me. If he has one instant speed removal spell, I still live. Although I'm in horrible shape. If he has two instant speed removal spells, I die unless I throw an extra thing in. 
to jump. Which I guess is... I don't really care so much if, like, if this mice token, if the mouse dies and I don't get the free mouse next turn, is that really that big of a deal? Probably not. Another Amara. Having an only a nine card spell book is pretty awesome because it means you don't have to, you don't get the spots where you have to take one of the garbage ones all that often. And there really aren't that many garbage ones in this thing's spell book. Never seen anyone take Loxid on Restorer. I mean, that's obviously terrible. And Overwhelm is also obviously terrible. Not really a hit. Let's give Vigilance, the turn it goes off, it does. Arwen is problematic card for him to have. This thing's also pretty problematic.
I could go Vanthasaur, Frill back, kill the might. That doesn't seem worth it. I could go Shepherd, Carnosaur. I think that's my best shot, which I do not think it is a very good shot, though. I think he took Overwhelm? Wow. What a way to die. What a way to die. Am I actually dead? Seems like I'm dead. Two there now. I guess I'm not dead. Doesn't seem like I'm going to win, though. I missed something. Got through. I couldn't follow all the arrows. Wow, what a way to lose. My dinosaur deck beaten by Ancient Imperiosaur twice. It's rough out here. Well, thanks for watching. It's a fun run. A little disappointing, but it happens. See you next time.